What's going on guys? Uh, today, I just wanted to start taking you through some of my knives in my collection. Uh, a little backstory, I used to be really into knives when I was younger. I had customs, production knives, cheap knives. I'm into everything. I like everything. I'm not partial to one thing or another, but throughout the course of my life, I kind of not outgrew it, but took interest in other things. And the result, as a result of that, I sold a bunch of my knives that I used to have to help pursue other things in my life that I enjoyed. Uh, not really going to get into what those things are, but needless to say, I used to have a lot more knives than I do now. Uh, I have slowly, honestly, just within the past few months, started growing my collection a little bit more. Uh, I just find knives interesting. They're useful tools. I carry one every day in one form or another. Uh, I carry one at work. I carry one when I'm not at work. Uh, I'm one of the guys, I use my knives a lot. I abuse them. I don't take near as good a care of them as I probably should. Uh, but having said that, I just enjoy knives. Uh, apart from just being a tool, just like anything else, some guys are into watches. You know, if you're one of the lucky ones, you, you can be into cars like that. Uh, I'm into all those things too, but knives are just, they're one of my things. Uh, so today, since I've started slowly trying to regrow, regrow my collection, I just wanted to kind of take y'all through some of my knives that I have. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, my collection is nothing to write home about. Uh, it pales in comparison to a lot of people's. Uh, as I said, I used to be more into it than I am. I had, you know, Chris Reeves, Medford's. I had, I had a bunch. I was never into the spot where I was buying two, three thousand dollar knives, but I had a couple thousand dollar knives. Uh, some custom ZTs, like I said, Chris Reeves. Uh, a bunch of smaller makers uh, I used to buy and sell a lot on Arizona Custom Knives. Most of those have since been sold, uh, but like I said, I'm trying to restart now. So uh, I just wanted to take y'all through a few of the knives that I've acquired here over the past couple months. Uh, specifically in this video, I'll be talking about everyone's new favorite, the Civivi Elementum. Uh, I haven't used this knife enough to really give an honest opinion on how it performs, but just from my, my initial impression, I do not see any reason to doubt what many other YouTubers and people on the forums have already said. Uh, so if you're just looking for a quick answer to, you know, whether you should buy this knife or consider this knife, if you think this knife based on specifications, you know, size, shape. If you think based on that, that it would match what you were looking for, then I say it is a great knife. Uh, the fit and finish is good. I like pretty much everything about the knife. Uh, but anyway, I've sat here and talked for three minutes. I'm sorry about that. Let's get into it. Uh, this is the Civivi. And I'm sorry, y'all, this is also my first time YouTubing, in case you haven't noticed. I haven't quite got a camera set up, really, yet, nor audio. So you'll just have to suffer with this through me. Because uh, I know the lighting is not great and the audio is not going to be great either. Uh, but anyway, this is the one that I purchased. This is the Elementum. The model number for this one is C907T. Uh, I got this one on Blade HQ. Uh, at the time, I think I paid, it was $52 and some change for it. And I think as of today, that is still the current price on Blade HQ uh, for this, this model anyway. This model is the Satin Finish D2 version with the green micarta scales. Uh, there's 
many of you probably know, you can get the Civivi in any flavor that you want. Uh, there are a lot of different versions of it, assuming you can find them in stock or catch them while they're in stock. But like I said, I didn't... This isn't a knife that I wanted to spend a whole lot of money on. I think that's the appeal of it because you get a lot of knife for the money. And as you get into other variations of it, you know, the Damascus and carbon fiber, that price really starts edging up. And once it gets to that point, there are other knives that I think would have my interest a little bit more. But anyway, this is the one that I got. Like I said, this the D2 version and the green micarta scales. Uh, the micarta has done really well. I like the way it feels. It's got just enough texture to be slightly grippy. And as far as micarta versus G10, uh, I really don't have too much for preference. I would have to say I slightly like my Carta better, but that is just a personal preference thing. Honestly, the bulk of my knives that I have are probably G10 knives, so I definitely don't have anything against G10. I just really like my Carta, and Civivi does a really nice job with the scales on this knife. Uh, so, green my Carta scales. This is the D2 version. I know it's also available in other steels, Damascus S35VN. Again, the whole point of this knife for me was to have a high quality budget knife. Uh, and once you get into those other steels, that price slowly starts edging up to the point that there would be other things that I would be interested slightly more in. So I went with the D2 version. D2 has been used for a long, long time. And I'm one of the ones of the mindset it seems like every other day they're coming out with some new super steel. And when it happens, everybody looks back at what was used and be like, well, it's just okay. D2 has been used for years and years and years. And it was just as good as the, it's just as good now as it was then. Just because newer steels have come out that are better, have better edge retention, more corrosion resistant, take a better edge, hold a better edge. That doesn't mean that this has gotten worse. It just means that it isn't as good as some of those new Super Steels. So, D2 is fine with me. Uh, I think it's much better than some of the offerings that you could get from a lot of Chinese manufacturers. I mean, you know, you've got your 7CRs, your 8CRs. I would much rather have D2. And Civivi does a very good job with their D2. But, anyway... This one has a 2.96 inch blade on this model. It is a drop point hologram blade, satin finish, sort of a brush satin finish. It's a good looking blade. Uh, Civivi does a really good job with it. Like I said, don't have a camera situation worked out yet. Do not know if you're in focus or not. But they do a really good job with their blades. Uh, this one does come shaving sharp out of the box as I think most knives should you know especially at a $50 price point a hair shaving sharp knife isn't too much to ask for I don't think this knife does have a flipper as you can see uh, smaller knives I prefer flippers uh, I don't know that it comes across on camera I have fairly large hands I wear an extra large glove most of the time and mechanics gloves or you know any type of work glove I normally wear an extra large I also have very fat chunky my wife calls them ogre fingers so a lot of the time if the knife itself doesn't facilitate very good use for thumb stud I would much rather prefer a flipper if this knife were to have a thumb stud like I said it doesn't and no model of the elementum does come with a thumb stud it would be near impossible for me to actuate. My thumb is just too big to get down in there. So on smaller knives, I much prefer a flipper. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, I don't have to try to dig my finger down in there. And the action on the Elementum is great. Like I said, I haven't used it a whole heck of a lot. Uh, I have used it enough to get a feel for it. It comes on bearings. Uh, it's not Teflon washers. It's not bronze washers. It does come on bearings. I don't know 
if you can see that, or if my camera is even in focus. I don't know if you can see down in there, but you just take my word for it. It comes on bearings, and it is a very smooth action. Uh, nothing really I can say about it there. Flips good. It will drop shut. Like I said, this knife is still basically brand new. It has not been broken in at all, really. So it will smooth out even more over time. Uh, it's got good jimping there on the top. It's, you know, it is what it is. For what this knife is meant to be used for, it's fine. It is purposeful. I can feel it. It will do its job. This is a liner lock knife. As you can see, liner's right there. Push it to the side. Folds in. The liner itself has jimping on it. As you can see. It is very... I'm trying to get this in right angles where you can see it. Unlike a bunch of large... I hate this word. Large tactical folders where this area right here would be cut up much higher to where you can get your thumb in there easier to actuate the liner lock. This one is nearly flush. I mean, it is just slightly ab above flush, but it's just enough that you can get decent purchase on there to actuate the liner. I've had no issues with it. Uh, like I said, even with my large hands, large fingers, especially thumbs, I have no issue actuating the liner. And it's a very light liner too. Uh, I've had some liner locks that not even because of something like lock stick, but just the liner was really, really tough to the point that if I were to have to pull my knife out and use it multiple times in a short time span, my thumb would be sore from having to actuate the liner. This one, it's not an issue at all. Uh, now that's not to say that the liner is weak. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's a well-tuned liner lock. Uh, it's got just enough resistance, yet it's still, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It's still, I hate to say weak. That's not, I don't want to use the word weak. That's not the right terminology, but it's just good enough. It's a good balance. It's easy enough to actuate the lock, but it's still plenty strong to do its intended job. Uh, this knife does have stainless steel liners, as you can see. It's sort of a shadow box style. It's got stainless liners, uh, pillar construction, all the way, both sides of the knife. The inside of the knife, don't know how well you can see it, but those liners are skeletonized. Good job, Civivi. Uh, I do like stainless steel liners in a knife. It's not a requirement, depending on what the knife is used for. And on this knife, I don't think it would be a requirement for what I use this knife for to have stainless liners all the way through. But I will take it when I can get it because it adds to the strength of the knife. And Civivi does an excellent, excellent job skeletonizing the liners. I mean, they remove as much material as they possibly can while still maintaining the structure of the knife without compromising it. Uh, they've done a really good job with that. The one thing on this knife that I don't like, and it's not specific to this knife necessarily with every knife, this lanyard hole right here. I know some guys swear by a lanyard, live and die by the lanyard. I understand that. I don't use a lanyard on my knives. Uh, my line of work, I'm a contractor. Uh, I do work inside outside and in industrial settings uh steel mills uh paper mills rock quarries mines we work we do a lot of underground work in the mines i have tried lanyards and what i have found that in my line of work like i said this won't apply to everybody a lanyard is just one more possible way for me to lose a knife a lot of the time, I'm on my stomach, on my knees, crawling through rock, mud, oil. And when I have a lanyard on there, all it has ever caused for me is the knife to snag on something and get pulled out of my pocket. And yes, I have lost, I think, two knives because of that. And after the second knife, 
loss. I'm trying to remember what the knife was. I don't remember off the top of my head. But after the second knife loss, I said, nope, I'm done with lanyards. Now, if you work in an office setting or a more urban setting, you may prefer a lanyard, and that may be fine. I'm just, I'm used to running one without one, so I no longer run one. But having said that, I'm not crazy about the way Civivi does their spot for the lanyard. Uh, and like I said, I know it would be an extra step to have this scale follow the contour of the handle all the way around around the lanyard hole. I think it would look much better if it was, though. If it were my option, I wouldn't have a lanyard hole on this knife at all. But that's just me. I understand many people like lanyards. I prefer none of my knives to have lanyard holes, yet most of them do. But that's just my opinion. But that's really the only gripe I have with the aesthetic of this knife at all. Uh, flipped over to this side. Deep carry pocket clip. Uh, it's black. I prefer that, even though it doesn't match the rest of this knife. Like I said, the rest of this knife is stainless, satin stainless. I don't, I don't mind the black clip just because the hardware on this knife is also black. The pivot is black. The torque screws are black. So it ties it all together. Civivi does a really good job with their clip. Uh, it's a very deep carry clip. Make sure I'm in frame. <laughs> it's a very deep carry clip. It'll disappear in the pocket. And I just, I prefer subtlety. That's why I don't like stainless clips. Really shiny. I don't like having attention drawed when it's not necessary. So I prefer this black clip. Uh, some specs about the blade. I don't really like to do specs because uh, it's nothing that you couldn't look up on your own online if you were looking to purchase this knife. But it's a 2.96 inch blade, D2 drop point. It's hollow ground, and Civivi does a really good job with their hollow grind. I really like it. Uh, like I said, this knife is shaving sharp out of the box. I did not have to touch it up. I use multiple sharpening systems. Uh, my kind of go-to one, just because I like the control it gives me, is one of the Lansky systems. Uh, it's not expensive. I think, I don't, I'm not sure what they run for now. I think when I bought mine on Amazon, it was around $40. Uh, that's my preferred system. Uh, it's just really easy. It gives me a lot of control. Uh, I use other systems, uh, you know, belt systems. But for most of my knives, I prefer the Lansky just because it gives me a lot of control. This knife, I would, I would not see any need to touch the blade up out of the box. Uh, the blade is very nice out of the box. No obvious imperfections with it. Like I said, it is shaving sharp. I do not have a piece of paper to show you that. You can just take my word for it. Uh, nothing at all wrong with it. Uh, the handle, this portion, is four inches long. A hair over four inches long, but on this channel, I'm not that OCD. I'll just call it four inches long. Like I said, these are the green micarta scales. Carry is right hand tip up only. That is the only position to carry this knife in. You can see nowhere else on this knife are there any pre-milled holes for your pocket clip, and that is fine with me. Right hand tip up carry is my preferred way of carry. That is not the only way I will carry. I will carry multiple ways. I have multiple knives that have different carry options, but right hand tip up is my preferred. So good job there, Civivi. Uh, as you've seen multiple times, this is a flipper, which, again, on a small knife like this at least, is also my preferred way of carrying. Liner lock. The knife weighs, I haven't put this on my scale. I'm not honestly not that worried about it. But according to Civivi, the knife weighs in at 2.89 ounces. I will take their word on that. It is a very light knife. It's a it's a smaller knife. Uh, I know many people prefer smaller knives for EDC. I actually am on the other side. A lot of that is because of my job. But I actually prefer larger knives for EDC. Now, when I say larger, I don't necessarily mean tactical blades necessarily. But just, not that I have anything against those. I have plenty of those myself. 
but just larger blades. I tend to be pretty rough on my knives. I don't take as good of care of my knives as I should. At the end of a job, a lot of the time, I will have been crawling around in sawdust and grease, and my knife will just be packed full of crud. And many times it will stay in there for days until before it gets cleaned out. So I just like big, chunky knives. Uh, I don't have to worry as much about abusing them. They can take a little bit more abuse, and that's just my preference. Uh, your mileage may vary. I do see the appeal for small knives. This would be a great knife just for going out to the town. You know, you and your wife go out to dinner, you know, dressed up a little bit. This would be a great knife to carry. Uh, and like I said, it's one of the advantages of the Elementum. You can get this in many different variations. You can get it in different blade finishes, blade styles, blade steels. Uh, I'm sorry, not blade styles. I think drop point is your only option. But you can get it in different finishes and different blade steels, many different handle variations, micarta, G10, uh, carbon fiber. There are probably others directly from Civivi. I'm not 100% sure. And then there are many aftermarket skills for this knife too. So this is one of the knives you can really make what you want of it. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. And I'm sure it would fit the bill. Uh, overall, it's a great knife. Uh, I wasn't sure when all the hype first started coming out about these. Uh, I'm willing to try anything once. And I'm glad I did. Like I said, this was one of the better knives that I've ever gotten for this amount of money. And like I said, I think at the time I paid around $50, $55 for this from Blade HQ. Uh, it's a great knife. There's really not a whole lot I can say about it to detract from it. <clears throat> trying to think. Yeah, uh, it's a good knife. I would highly recommend it to anyone. If you can look at this knife, look at photos of this knife, look at the specifications of this knife to get a general overview of the size, and you think a knife of this size, this profile, this form factor is what you were looking for, this knife is a great choice for that. Uh, the quality is outstanding, especially for the price. Like I said, I know Civivi is a sub subsidiary, I don't know, I don't know the correct term for that, of Wee Knives, and Wee Knives has some very nice, very nice knives. So you're getting that quality control with this knife, uh, and it shows. This is just a really good knife for the money. Uh, if anyone has been on the fence about one of these, I would highly recommend it. Uh, there's nothing There's nothing I can come up with to really detract from this knife at this price point. Yeah, if this was a $150, $200 knife, I could nitpick a few things. Uh, but at the price point this knife comes in at, I think it's a great buy. Yeah, I would highly recommend you pick one up. Uh, like I said, there's many different variations of it. And actually, now that I've purchased this one, I'm actually thinking about going back to Blade HQ. Like I said, I know this knife, whether it's in stock or not, is sort of hit or miss. You might have to shop around. Uh, Blade HQ, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, Knife Center. I'm not sponsored, endorsed anything by any of these channels. Those are just where... I, to this day, have bought the majority of my knives. Uh, even, I think, I came across while shopping, I think Walmart actually sells these knives too. Now, that you're not buying it through Walmart. Uh, you're not going to go to a Walmart store and find a Civivi Elementum. You will find it on their website. But you're not purchasing it from Walmart. They are much like Amazon. They are the middleman. You'll be purchasing it from an outside store, and it will be fulfilled through Walmart. Uh so you can find these knives multiple places. Shop around, see what's in stock, find a model you like. I highly recommend you pick one up. Anyways, thanks guys. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. I try to check my comments regularly, but I am a very busy person. Most of the time I work anywhere from 12 to 24 hour shifts, uh, sometimes multiple weeks at a time. So I try to do what I can. But if you have any questions, shoot me a message, leave me a comment. Uh, if you like what you see, like I said, I'm just a normal dude. 
I have no desire really to be some big famous YouTuber. I don't even have a Facebook, so social media is not my thing at all. I'm not in this for that. I just enjoy knives. And I enjoy talking about knives. I enjoy playing with knives. I enjoy talking to people about knives. So this is my outlet. YouTube is my outlet. You guys are my outlet to my drug, which is, at, at the time, knives. Anyway, if you have any questions, have any comments, uh, feel free. Leave a comment down below. Shoot me a message. Uh, if you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm not even sure what the terms are. Anyways, have a good day, guys. Thanks.